Okay, here we have question eight from my practice paper B, which is taken from C1 of June 2018, question number six, the GCE paper. This is a recurrence relationship. Before this used to be a topic in the old C1, now this is in the P2. This is one of the reasons why I compiled this paper from different parts to make it relevant to the P2 exam. Anyway, so this is for the international A-level paper. Now the sequence A1, A2, A3 is defined by A1 is equal to four and AN plus one is equal to AN over AN plus one. N is greater than or equal to one and N is a natural number. So N can only be um, the counting numbers starting from one then the whole numbers, natural numbers, one, two, three, four, no decimals. N means natural number. So it's only the whole numbers which are greater than zero, positive whole numbers. Okay, so what this means is to get to the next term, that's n plus one, it's a bit unclear, but it's a n plus one. To get to the next term, you've got to take the previous term and divide it by one more than the previous term. Okay, so that's what that means. So for example, if you want to find a two, we've got to take a one, the term before it, and divide it by a one plus one. So we know that a one is equal to four. So that means I've got to take four and divide four by four plus one, which is four over five. So I now know that the second term is four fifths. So we've got to find a two, a three, and a four. So let's write it here. A two is equal to four fifths. Okay, um, a one was equal to four. So now we've got to do the same thing to find a three and a four. So to find a three, I've got to take the term before it, which is a2, and divide that by a2 plus 1. So I'm going to have um, a1, a2, which is 4 fifths. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it like this, divided by, because we've got a fraction and another fraction, it looks a bit weird, um, 4 fifths plus 1. 4 fifths plus 1. Okay, that's going to give me 4 fifths divided by, that's 5 over 5, that's 9 over 5, which gives me 4 fifths times 5 over 9. The 5's cancel out and you're left with 4 over 9. So we can say A3 is equal to 4 over 9. Okay, and now A4 is going to be A3 divided by A3 three plus one. So you're going to end up with f uh, four fifths divided by now, sorry, four fifths, four ninths. Okay, A3 is four ninths divided by A3 plus one. If I add one to this, it's like adding nine over nine. So it's going to be divided by 13 over nine. Okay, which is equal to four ninths times nine over 13. So the nines cancel out, leaving you with four over 13. Okay, so let's write down all our results. There seems to be a lot of fours in there, right? So you've got A, well, we'll just put A1 is equal to four. They gave us that. A2 is equal to four fifths. It looks like there's fours everywhere in the numerators. A3 is equal to four ninths. A4 is equal to four over 13. Okay, I can see a pattern. Okay, now let's... Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is answer part B and we, I think we need this information so I've copied it over to the next page. Now, part B says um, AN is equal to 4 over PN plus Q where P and Q are constants. State the value of P and the value of Q. Well, we already spotted that there's a pattern here. You see, you've got four, and then you've got four fifths, then you've got four ninths, and you've got four thirteenths. So you're always gonna have four on top, and underneath, the, the pattern is like, it starts with a one, that's like four over one, and then four over five, and then four over nine. So you can say the first term has a denominator of one, the second term has a denominator of five, the third term has a denominator of nine, the fourth term has a denominator of 13 and so on. And you can see that you have to add four each time. 
Like you can do this in different ways. I like I like to use the way that I taught in IGCSEs. Basically, it's going up by fours, so it's got something to do with the four times table, so it's got something to do with four n, but the first term is one. So how do I make it start from one and go up by four? I take away three from it, so it's going to be four over four n minus three. So we can say p is equal to four and q is equal to three. Okay, that's how I used to teach in IGs, but now uh, most of you would probably be used to using the formula, which I also, you know, go through that the first term is one and the common difference is five. So we want to find um, the nth term. So the nth term is going to be a plus n minus one times d. So that's going to be one plus you're going to have, um, so you're going to have one plus, uh, yeah, what was I going to say? One plus n minus 1 times d, so you're going to have n minus 1 times 5, sorry, okay, because we're finding the nth term, so n is n, so you have 1 plus 5 minus 5n, sorry, minus 4, which gives you 5n, sorry, Okay, so most of you um, would have actually learnt or you know, be more comfortable with the method that is what you're used to for this. A is equal to 1, D is equal to 4, and N is equal to N. We're looking for the nth term. So the nth term is given by the formula A plus N minus 1 times the common difference. So the nth term, which is what we're trying to find, okay, is A, which is 1 plus n minus 1 so you got n is n still n minus 1 times 4 so that will give you 1 plus 4n minus 4 which is 4n minus 3 so it's exactly the same thing as we get there okay i just prefer this method it's just like it's going up by 4 so it's got something to the 4 times table so 4n so i want it to start i want it to go up in 4s but start from 1 so that would start from four. How do I make it start from one? I've got to take three away from it. So that will give you the sequence that starts from one but goes up in fours. Okay. But well, anyway, no problem. Either way is perfectly fine. That's why I showed them both. So, that, so we can say the value of P is four and the value of Q is, oh my God. Sorry about that. You've got to be really careful. The value of Q is minus three. Someone of you would have thought, oh, he's made a mistake. So yeah, I did. But always check. Always be very careful when you write. It's easy to make mistakes, but that's why it's always good to make a quick check before you continue. Okay, so Q is equal to minus 3, not 3. Okay, that's part B. And then part C says, hence calculate the value of N such that A N equals 4 over 321. So basically, you want to know when 4 over 321 is, we want to find the nth term for that. So that's going to be 4 over... 4n minus 3. Well, the numerators are both 4, so the denominators, you want to find when does this denominator become 321. So we need to solve the equation 4n minus 3 equals 321. So we add 3 to both sides, so we have 4n equals 324, and then we divide by 4, so we have 324 divided by 4, which is 4 goes into 32 8 times. And 4 goes into 4 one time, so it's 81. So N, so N, that's a capital N, capital N, capital N. So N is equal to 81. Okay, when N is equal to 81, you're going to get that value. Okay, and that's the end of that question.